Welcome. This is Barry Jones from the Angel School. And we're here for a weekly angel reading for May 25th through the 31st, 2020. So before we begin, I just want to make a reminder um, that the special offer for my angel readings um, usually my half hour angel reading, well, not usually, but my half hour angel reading is $77. And so for the month of May and possibly through this um, health pandemic, um, the you can get that angel reading for 30 minutes for one hour. So there isn't a different button for this, you just would uh, choose the half hour reading for $77, and that will automatically um, be your the special offer. And when you write me, when, the, when I receive your payment, I will um, send you an email uh, noting that special offer within 24 hours on business days, okay? So um, not on the weekends. <laughs> and so I'll try to get back to you within 24 hours so you don't have to worry um, about anything. If I don't write you back on a weekend, it's because those are my days off. Um, and my business hours are between 12 noon and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. or So just be patient with that process um, and understanding of it. Because over the weekend, I do the videos and then try to do take care of my own personal things. So my life hasn't really changed much <laughs> um, in the sense that, you know, just busy with other things as well um, that concern the channel and things I'm exploring. So let's take a deep breath and hope that all of you, as you're joining in this week, that you're settling in, that you're finding your way, and that the path of enlightenment and peace and joy is that you're re rediscovering these things within your heart through a new awareness of unconditional love and hope that you're affording yourself this opportunity to, to receive during this time. And so they ask you to be easy with yourself. And that's where they're really starting. They ask you to be easy with yourself. And they write the word copied, and I've been getting people saying this to me, and, responses like, okay, I understand. <laughs> and so um, they want you to be easy with yourself in your life, and they want you to get this. They want you to um, pay attention to where in your life you are not being easy with yourself, with the self-talk, okay? Um, the emotions, they just wrote, literally wrote the word cry. So you may be experiencing emotions or, or burst of emotions at times um, and they they want you to to show me a scroll and it's almost like there is information and it's almost like the emotions it's like say of a cry um, is clearing sort of the blocks that are impeding this new clarity of information coming through. So you may be focused on so many things that create resistance, like loss, um, different types of loss that you've incurred during this time. And these uh, any emotions that come up for you are, first of all, the purpose for uh, to relieve and to allow you to release. And it's upon that. Don't try to um, don't try to fight these things. Let them flow. Let your emotions um, flow. Okay. And it's a difference between um, I think 
getting taking it personal, like getting in some way um, letting it upset you more, because that would be like you trying to trying to damn black. So I'm sorry, block the 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 flow. So like you're creating a dam where things can't flow. So one of the things I think that emotions that scare us, um, especially the emotions that we perceive to be negative, they scare us because we um, we don't. We, they, it's a f- like being out of control. And as long as you allow them to flow, that is to say, not to take them personally, not to have a, a reaction to them um, or create some kind of resentment or some guilt. You know, these, these specific types of, of um, awareness around those emotions means that you're not letting anything flow you're backing it up, you're holding it back or you're blocking it because guilt is not a, res- it's not a healing response to your emotions flowing. Guilt, resentment, bitterness, anger, frustration um, in response to emotions that come up is a further resistance. It's like you're blocking so when your emotions express themselves in a form of something like a cry, it is the flow and release. It's like you're complying with that flow and release. And that energy needs to come out in order for the enlightenment to flow through and sort of cleanse the that area where that void was, where that block was held. See, once you release, light comes in. In, in the form of enlightenment, clarity. You may feel a sense of peace. Of, of, you may even feel um, empowered, renewed, or abundant. So it's, it's very important to not hold back emotions. Now we're not talking about lashing out emotions at others because that's, I mean, there's a place for this. I'm not telling you that these things are wrong, but I, there's a specific thing that they want you to, they want you to focus on your release and your, your own healing when emotions come up. And sometimes, bl- well, not sometimes, but in truth, you know, just blaming others and lashing out on them so that they, you don't, you're hurting. And so you're like, well, let me share this with you. <laughs> or um, that you're projecting um, or p- placing the responsibility on someone else, then this is not that thing either. That's not the release heal because that's just another form of resistance, another way of blocking the truth. You know, so when we laugh at other people, we're like putting our ha- our hands over our ears and closing our eyes and just, you know, so therefore we're not seeing, we're not understanding, we're not hearing what we need to hear in order for things to come back into alignment and balance for us. We're not able to create harmony when we block out the truth. So this is... Something in this week, uh, it's be interesting to see where this is going. So I'm curious now to take a look at the cards and see where this discussion the angels are having with us is going. Okay, so you all know this is my, <laughs> in this deck, this card I struggle with. <laughs> You know what to do. <laughs> and this is so hard because... <clears throat> When you are seeking that guidance, you're thinking to yourself, I don't know what to do. Or when things feel, when emotions are flowing like that, or you're feeling very emotional, you're, you really don't feel that you know at all what to do. And this is Archangel Uriel. And the card says, trust your inner knowledge and act upon it without delay. And we're just having this 
discussion with some clients yesterday about this trust component and their souls really bought through um, extraordinary information. But this is when you, you know, it's important that you, at this moment, that you don't use phrases like, I don't know. And that's how I think that this, the cards phrase, it, 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 it creates a reaction right away. Just what we were just talking about, that resistance, you know. Um, and this is like, we, we look to the angels at this moment for answers, and then they say back to you, you know what to do. And we react to that because there is, we're reacting to the responsibility that in that moment we don't want and or we believe that we're not capable of being responsible to know. You know, it's that sense of um, perpetuating the idea that you're inadequate, you know, that you're powerless, that other people um, have strengths that you don't have and that you see yourself just lacking so much uh, in comparison. And if you see yourself this way, when you speak to God and any of the angels, then you are basically, if you see yourself, when, you know, this whole idea of talking to God as though you are less than, how can you then really commune with God in the way that he would be, or it would be able to express itself to help you understand what you need because you are, you are an extension of the creator and you are a gift to this world. You're, you're an, a sort of an ambassador, ambassador of um, representing God and you think yourself less than and incapable. And so right there and then in there, you're ability to sort of translate and receive the, the messages is going to be, you know, difficult. Um, it's for you, you can be strained to hear or to understand even better. So first of all, it's this awareness that you have to trust the love that is flowing in your heart. And the only time that you won't know is when you're not flowing in that channel of love, that you're holding so much potential back by constantly affirming, you know, when you have to make decisions that you don't know what to do, you don't know if this is the right thing to do or not. And so instead of saying that, say, I think I know, because you can at least believe that in the moment, right? You can believe that, like that, that sounds pretty reasonable for our ego and yeah, well, I think I know. And the idea is to not be afraid of exploring that knowing and, and also being aware that you can make, there's always going to be, once you make a choice, that, that is, that's not where choice ends. Making a choice is never a dead end. Your ego can convince you that you're in a dead end. Fear is what's doing that. But the universe, choice for, for the universe, choice is infinite just like your potential to become is infinite. And these things happen whether you are aware or not, whether you are intentional or unintentional, this process is happening. Whether you are negatively focused or not, this awareness continues. You are always evolving. There is no other possibility of existence for you. There is truly no way for one to not 
make progress or to, let's say, perceive progress within themselves, there is an interpretation that you may have. And that's why they say beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. I mean, you may not see yourself as beautiful, successful. You may not see yourself as evolving. You may not see someone else as enlightened or evolving because of your judgment of them. But the reason that we would judge someone in this way is because you may think that you are evolving, but you judge yourself a lot. And that is the only way that you could project that into your reality. So it's very important for us to pay attention to how we talk to ourselves, going back to what you are saying at the beginning, because that determines what we project out there onto the, the reality that we're experiencing. And so it's from that point of view that you do know what to do, because whether you're aware of what you're doing or not, you are doing it, and that is the key to understanding what you are getting as a result. And that's what they mean, you know what to do. Because if you, when you don't trust yourself, you get this whole set of developments in your life that make you critically un, unhappy, unhealthy, um, I don't know if this is the word, but unprosperous, and so on and so on. And when you make decisions that are for your optimal good, you've experienced those results. And you are aware of the connection between doing that, performing that, or making that kind of choice, and the kind of results that come with it. Even on those, even on both of these paths, it could flip-flop. But the difference is, is that if you have a negative outcome on a positive uh, path of, you know, predominant choices of, you know, that are good for you, when you make a decision that didn't turn out so well for you, you see, you see it in its context and you go, okay, I, you know, this is not that bad. I just probably could have, just, if I tweak it this way, it'll be a lot better for me. Or, you know, I'm just going to turn around and go this way and continue moving forward in that direction. Whereas on the negative path, somebody will have a positive thing happen and they will tear it to shreds. They will run from it because they're so scared like that they are not going to do, be worthy of this, that they convince themselves and talk themselves out of that opportunity. So you can see the universe isn't choosing where to bless you and to, and to, to not. When we think we're not being blessed, the the a belief is being challenged that will be turn out to be a blessing for you in the long run and this is what the negative experiences are you will you can you can grow through either one of these paths but challenges provoke your potential to come forward so if you don't wrestle with the idea, or wrestle with what you're being challenged by, and instead, you know, reflect and say, what is, what is this challenge making me aware of? Or what is coming into my awareness because of this challenge? And I would challenge you then to, and because I, I did this the other day, just I just woke up, I felt these emotions, and I went and... Um, you know, I kind of created a question for myself, journaled, and with the tarot cards, and, you know, it just unfolded. Um, I had a dream, and so I just asked myself, what's coming to my awareness about this dream that I had? And when I saw it, it made sense. I kind of, or you could just start journaling, and then when you feel like you have no other alternative, you feel stuck, pull a card, oracle or tarot card, and then continue to journal until you feel stuck again, and then continue to journal until you feel, ah, I understand. 
But the point is, is that there is no good, bad. There is just opportunities to learn and evolve. And on what we perceive as the, the positive, there are still opportunities to learn and evolve. Just the lessons will feel different, but they're there nonetheless. So you know what to do. And the first thing is to trust your heart. And you say, but, well, I trust my heart and this, and this person, <laughs> you know, let's say if it was a romantic relationship or it was just a partnership, they turned out to be different. I had this feeling about them. But see, that's the thing where we get it wrong because it was never about knowing their heart. It was about knowing your heart. So when you... When a person, another person, doesn't turn out to be what you expected, this is the same thing. What is this situation or this relationship? What's coming into my awareness about this relationship? Like, what is this helping me to learn? How am I growing in this moment based on this? And you will see that this is a blessing instead of, something you did wrong. This is what I mean by taking things personally. That is to say that you take on the responsibility of what someone else does, how they behave, and then you become blocked. Whether it's to say, be thankful for whatever, whatever people reveal to you. So, you know, always be grateful and appreciate that people reveal who they are, whether it is something you like or you don't like. Because if they hid it from you, then you would really not understand anything about yourself. You would not be able to, to really figure out where you, where you are and who you are and where you want to go, what you deserve. But instead we go, oh, they, 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 they betrayed me or they, they cheated on me or whatever. And then we take it personally. We start going, you know, what's wrong with me? Or, you know, it just hurts me. Somewhere. And, and the thing is, is like they showed you who they were. Trust that. Believe that. Now this gives you the opportunity to decide who you believe you are and what you deserve. And then let that start you on that path of um, receiving that gift and that opportunity. You don't have to get upset with them and get mad with them and try to get them to be better and argue with them about it. Let it make up your mind for you about who you are. You don't want to know, you don't ever want to know somebody else because that's not the reason for us to be here. It, the, the, the old sin is to know thyself. This is the thing, that's our purpose here. And this is why it's hard when you see a card like say, you know what to do, because the pra we always practice the opposite of that. We want to know, we, we spend more time trying to know who other people are, and that's why we feel betrayed by them when they don't behave the way we want them to. Because you're, you know, that's that looking for love in all the wrong places, because the love that you are supposed to be investing is in yourself. And when you give love to other people, you don't expect anything from them. Whatever they give to you, you receive it. You receive it and you process it through your own knowing. Whatever they give to you, whether it's betrayal or deep passion, you process that through your own inner knowing. It's always about who am I now? How do, how, how do I know myself? What is it that I know about myself? Not what I know about them. And this is a little awkward, but it's, it's, um, if it comes a little clearer, clearer to me, then I will express that. But it, it's... This is just really what's on the tip of the iceberg for me here in this moment. This is so important. And I do think that accurately 
said, I do think you get what I'm talking about. Because this is why things hurt so much when our outer reality just doesn't seem to work the way we expect them or anticipate them to. Because you are dependent, you're um, dependent on the outcomes to fulfill you whether it's a person or a a job opportunity, you're waiting for that thing to fulfill you, as if to say, once I have this, I am what I would like to believe I am. And there's a, a whole range of doubt in that. So you don't really believe it unless it's validated outside of you. And if you think like, if we feel this way, then it's hard for us to trust ourselves very difficult it's what I'm proposing is that you're we practice in such a way that we make this message difficult to really connect with so we have to be aware of how we practice and you know instead of saying I don't know think okay change it I think I know all right, and if you really don't know something, you probably shouldn't even be wasting your time to entertain what that is. If you're just like really not sure about a particular direction, is what I'm talking about, then if is that that blind to you, then why why try it? Why why go that direction? Go the route where you think you know this is what where you're really being called. Go where you think you know or do know. And then, as you practice that more often, then those areas, you will have a greater knowing and trust of yourself to know through discernment whether or not that's right for you. Okay, so let's take a look at the card for the beginning of the week. So this is the, definitely a card that really um, so much about that, what we're talking about in the beginning, that disappointment, the grief, you know, um, sort of feeling, um, sort of feeling lost. It's almost like, you know, she's in color and the rest of the world around her isn't. And it, it's, it's, this is, the, so the background that's in neutral, this is like the spilt cups, you know? Um, She feels like alone and she feels like the rest of the world is just um, detached from her in some way. And so, um, you know, in this card, she is just, with the blue and the sort of water, just that emotion for me, it's like she's just, you know, she's processing that, that she's holding that one bowl and she's just being, um, holding the space for what's going, what's happening, what's happening to her and what's, what she's processing emotionally at the moment. And the thing about it is, is that that neutral camp canvas um, is for her to color in. It will be colored in through her own perspective. So, you know, this is what kind of happens, you know, as I was saying, we block that when we're disappointed or we resentment or grief, we're blocking that flow. So there's a lot, and the, you know, number five is about change, right? So there's a lot of change, and we grieve when, when change is unfolding, but change is also an indication of progress, of new developments, and new opportunities in the process of unfolding. This is why the message is to not hold on to our grief or to hold on to our disappointment or hold on to our resentments. Because when the world feels less colorful, less vibrant, you are in that process. You're going through that relief release process 
where change can flow through you and around you. Because everything happens from the inner reality. The outer reality is always a reflection of your inner reality. And so when you are grieving or processing, you need to allow that to flow. You need to allow that to flow so that change and development can unfold. Okay? I think we've had this card come up a lot, especially in our daily card messages. And I think we've had this in, in our readings here for the weekly angel readings. Now, this is interesting with that waterfall um, in the background there. And so we're seeing that... Um, here we have, this is the Two of Cups, which is called the Two of Water. So we have, uh, you know, two cards from the same suit of dealing with relationships. Um, and, you know, our own, own healing um, as well. I think this, this suit is also very much about healing, you know. And so here, there, this the owner with her dog, and notice they both... <laughs> have you know this white hair so it's 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 uh, it makes me think of the ascension process um it makes me also um think about this connection um with the world with this relationship with your yourself and and with your outer reality sharing this love and sort of letting your heart just be open it's so hard to do especially after something you feel like you've been hurt or something has um happened you know where you feel in this loss and resentment but it's important to keep your heart open and to let your heart to let things flow to let those emotions f flow there's that sense of abundance that that waterfall gives that there's this influx of abundance processing as you allow this to 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 let go and you start to when you let it go you start to feel reconnected to life um itself and it's, it's just a process of mat maturing that and and uh, and um in development that we have to you know get used to all right let's take a look at the card for the end of the okay so we have gaia the world card very interesting here as we go from um this perspective so it feels like the world like like gaia the, she's kind of looking back they're looking forward and she's looking back at them. And again, we have this sense of maturity. So in this week, you have an opportunity to mature spiritually and to really process um, on an emotional level. So there's going to really, there's, there's, it seems like there's going to be this um, emotional um, development and that where you start off with, you know, um, processing some, some grief, some disappointments. Um, and this is going to help you to look at your world differently. See, this is all happening again, that challenge to provoke you to reassess your world, to reassess it through the, um, the kinds of relationships you've established with yourself you know, like even with your your job, you know, do you create this um, dynamic where you feel like you have to be have all the you have to work the certain kinds of jobs, you have to work all these kinds of hours, you have to earn all this type of money in order to be fulfilled, you know, because you invest so much of yourself in these things and they disappoint you, they can suddenly not be there. And we, we realize that we've become so dependent on so many things outside of us, you know, with the gadgets and the, the, the subscriptions to this and to that and your, 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 your prime memberships. I mean, there's so many things that we're dependent upon. And, and we were, um, our world was just almost, you see all this natural um, it's like we, we got away from all that that's natural about the world. And we 
we are sort of just focused in this mechanical world and, you know, um, things needing to happen um, immediately instead of gradually, you know, that we don't even shop anymore. It's, it's, it's like we just order it, order it, order it. And that becomes so easy and it increases consumption and, and, and also puts a big hole in your, in your, in your purse, in your wallet. Um, and so there are lots of things that your these, the, the, the current loss um, is going to create a lot of emotions are going to come up and a lot of self reflection and introspection is going to become intense. And that all of this is to help you to find that new relationship with your world, with your outer reality, so that you, f you um, are able to create harmony, natural, get back in t touch with the natural rhythms of your soul, because your soul doesn't need all the, this stuff to be happy. And the more we pile it on, the less um, that it feels possible to actually be happy. So, start, you know, this, this time we've been stripped down to the bare, right? To the bare essentials. And, uh, and in that, you're probably finding some relief, you know? Um, and realizing like, wow, I mean, I could kind of do this a different way. And, you know, and working from home, you're seeing like, boy, I could, you know, it just gives, it makes you start thinking. And so I feel like Gaia is looking back on all of this and smiling because where you are right now, you don't know what she knows and, and what you, what's, what's possible for you if you, to be in this place where you feel like you're in neutral and starting all over again and having so little, that you can color in that world the way you want. But you have to do it deliberately and without um, wanting to maintain everything the way it was, but to be open to what you really need you know, this is maybe a time to simplify so that you don't get so disappointed by so many things and so many people. To simplify the relationships that are not, that down to the relationships that are harmonious for you and that are easy to, um, and enjoyable, you know, to simplify your life so that you can actually enjoy life in its natural um, state, you know, but when you, it's too complicated because you're doing things that you think you have to do and, and you think you need this in order, to, so you gotta do this in order to be able to afford that, you know, simplify, simplify, bring your, bring it down to like, you want, you want to be happy in your life, then simplify your life so that it's easier for you to be happy in your life. See, you know what to do. This is only, this is the decision that has to come from your heart. And you have to own it. You have to acknowledge it and trust it. And being in this shutdown period is allowing everyone to see just how simple they could make their lives. That there was a lot of, there was an extreme things that you were entertaining and working to support. And so that is just going to, and that's, and this I think is creating, this may be what's the undercurrent of these emotions that you may be feeling at the beginning of the week at least and throughout the week. And you're developing a new relationship. You're, you're, you know, we're just going from sort of being in this, I almost want to think about it, like she's sort of not awakened here, sort of in a dream, a coma, and then where she matures here, 
and she sees everything from a very different perspective. She's able to look back, and we are just having this part time in our lives where we're able to look back, and um, and be be open to new ideas of change. So this whole week has been motivated motivated by this number five of you know this is conflict. It's about change. Um, in transitions, etc., challenges, and this is all good because it stimulates activity in as in different facets of your awareness that were dormant in some way. All right. So, oh, we got the card from the bottom. Maybe don't need it. Okay. Well, so the card from the bottom is the tree which is the hangman. And so be patient with yourself, okay? This is what we were just talking about. There's time for reflection, introspection. So be very, very patient with yourself and what is going on with you as a result. Um, you know, this is a time for you to see your life from, from, from a different perspective, point blank. And um, in this week, you know, it'll help you to shift the way you see your world, to see the way you see yourself in the world and what you, you know, you may discover like, oh, you thought this was you, what you were blaming as and complaining about as the cause for all of your unhappiness. You realize that in this sort of more simplified period of life that you were the one who made the choice and you're the one who can now make different choices. All right. So I send you lots of love and angel blessings and thank you for watching. And if you're looking for an angel reading, remember you can contact me at the angelschool.com. You can find that description, um, that link below in the description um, box below the video. Um, don't forget to watch the um daily cart messages or read them on my Facebook page and here on YouTube. And I think you can get some things through Twitter as well. So have a beautiful week. I know this is a, a bit much and, and somewhat challenging us um, to think differently and to be open and aware to what's really happening to us underneath. But I think it will be rewarding um, since we have more time to make to to assess the changes that we want to make in our lives so god bless you everyone have a good week